Hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about our newest version of SW Remote, version 3. I'm going to go through a little bit about the styling changes and some of the new features here in version 3 and how it is similar to our previous versions and how it relates to those as well. This way you can get an idea of how to use Mobile Technician version 3 through this video. So first off, upon clicking on the SW Remote icon, it's going to bring you into the login screen, just like before. Uh, you're going to log in using your username, your password, selecting your company, and your truck. So I'm going to enter in my password and proceed. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Uh, upon logging in, it's going to download the price book if it's your first time into the application. And if not, it's going to bring you right into the first step uh, here, which is My Jobs. So upon logging in, you're going to notice a few differences right here. First off, there's a menu along the left-hand side. This is controlled through the menu bar at the top. And you can hit this button to make the menu go away or to click it again to make it come back. So that menu can uh, be removed if you need a bigger screen or back if you need to access some of that information. So inside the menu, you're going to have the assignment, which is going to pull up your assignment you're on. And then it's going to have the other options such as schedule or customer search if you have permissions to view those. It's also going to have the about, the settings within the application, as well as the logout button down here at the bottom. So that's how you can access that information in the menu. So I'm going to close the menu and talk a little bit about the My Job screen. So here you have the My Job screen. Uh, before I proceed into My Job, we also have the uh, status up here at the top. Uh, this is where I can choose a different time card status. So for example, if I'm not proceeding with my call, I can choose different time card statuses such as available on, lunch, or any of the other statuses that you might have inside your successor. You do that by choosing it up there and then of course clicking save to save it. I'm just going to close it right here by hitting close and I'm back at my assignments. So with my assignment, let's talk a little bit about what you can see here. So you have your customer's name, the address, the time call is scheduled, as well as the time for the previous timestamp there. So mine was notified at 2.36. I have the type of call, the primary tech of the call, the priority of the call if entered inside Successware, and whether or not this call was confirmed by your dispatch staff. All things that you're used to seeing previously in the other versions, all listed right here, just a little bit differently. Uh, below that, though, you're going to have access to job instructions now. So now, prior to entering the call, you'll be able to see those instructions. So you can see a little bit about the call before even entering it. Also, if you have it set to see multiple calls, in other words, your text can see more than one, those will be showing up down here as well, so you can see each one of your upcoming calls below that. All right, now that I'm ready to proceed with my call, I can click right on the call, and it's going to bring me into the Step 1 Dispatch screen, just like it used to in the existing application. So it brings me into step one, dispatch. Uh, before I proceed, let's talk a little bit about what we have up here. At the top, most of the steps are grayed out right here, but these are the steps that I'm going to go through as I complete my call. So right now I'm dispatch, and soon I'll be on route and on site and so on, so that I can click through and see at any point where I am inside the application. I also have access to directions right here, so the same direction notes that were in the previous applications will be showing up right here. And I have a map if I need to access the map at any point to see where in the job I'm heading out to or where this job is located. Now before you, uh, you would have a dispatch and a back button, but now we just simply have arrows. Arrows to go back to, uh, to go back into the application, and of course an arrow to go forward to proceed with the call. Uh, before I proceed though, let's talk about that side menu again. So if I were to click that menu button, it pop open the side menu. And this time I have some information here. So of course I have assignment, which is always going to pop me right back to, to the assignment that I was on. Uh, but below that I also have access to job instructions. Just like before, I can pop up those in job instructions, take a look at it, and I can hit close to close it. I have now customer information. The same customer information you were looking at before with those different tabs such as location, account, agreements, equipment, and history. Same that you were before, all access right here. Uh, one thing I do want to show you though is you can always go into equipment to you know add or edit a screen. So if I pop that open, I can edit it just like I did before. If I close the menu, I have a bigger screen to access that information. And if I click inside a field where I need to type, of course the keyboard will come up. Well, there's a new feature with this version of our application. If I were to turn the application on its side into landscape mode, you will see that the application now works in landscape mode. So I have access to those fields here and wherever I need to key in, and I can pop up a much bigger keyboard here where I can go through and enter in that information if I need to. So again, the application now on any screen will work in 
landscape mode, which is a great new feature there. So I'm going to put it back to portrait mode here so I can continue with the uh, demonstration here. So now I'm done with my equipment and I want to head back to my job. So I can just simply hit close and close again and I'm back at my direction screen. Or of course I can always hit the menu button and click on assignment to bring me back to where I was. So I'm at my direction screen and I can now proceed forward by hitting the arrow in the lower right hand corner. And this is going to step me through the job just like it did in the previous jobs or the previous versions of our application. So now I have dispatched out. It's going to bring me into a map of where I'm heading out to. Still have navigation down here if I need to uh, pull up the navigation. I can do that by hitting that button. And of course I can hit the next arrow to proceed myself forward uh, uh, again. So now this is going to bring me to my on-site screen where I can put myself on site at the customer's location. Just like before I have my job instructions, I can plug in my duration if I need to. And I'm simply going to hit the forward arrow to mark myself on site at the application. So once on site, just like with the previous versions, I'm now going to be able to build an invoice for the customer. And this invoice screen is very much going to look the same as uh, the previous versions. You know, you have your buttons across the top for adding items, agreements, visits, and discounts. And of course, you have your line items as you start throwing them on the invoice will be listed here. Um, one thing, though, I want to talk about is adding items. So if I hit plus item here, I can go through and add items onto my invoice. And just like with those uh, previous versions, I can type right inside here and click search to search for the item, or of course I can go through my catalog and find the, the item through my catalog. One thing you'll know is these uh, these screens right here have a much bigger typeface and a much bigger button to press. This will make it a little easier for your technicians to read that stuff and also to choose the correct items as it's spaced a little bit more and in a much bolder text. So that's great for uh, your technicians to be able to find things. And then I hit task and it brings me into my price book task section. I'm going to go into my price book section here. And of course I have my list here. I'm going to go into my uh, group and then from the group I'm going to choose the task that I'm adding on to the invoice. So here I have my listed. I have my item number, the description right here, uh, same department uh, price level. So I can choose my price level if I need to right there. I can choose uh, silver after hours, you know, any of the price levels you might load. I can change prices if told I can do so. I have quantity as well as additional things such as add-on, discountable, or diagnostic. So I can go ahead and key all that stuff as I used to. Even charge it to an agreement or to a warranty if needed. But of course, for this one, I'm just going to hit save and that item is now going to be added on to my invoice. So that's how you add items through the catalog. Very similar to how it was before. Well, let's talk a little bit about the search this time. So say I wanted to search for an item this time, and I can type in some search parameters. I can do anything via keyword in the item number or the description and click search. And it's going to pull up my options, just like it did before. But what's new now, if I click on an item and, oh, maybe that wasn't the right item, and I hit close, it's going to bring me right back to where I was. So it'll be easy for me to go and choose the correct items when doing so. And if I clicked on the right item, adds it right onto there, and I can hit save. And that's still going to bring me right back to my search features too. So if I'm going in and adding a bunch of different items from a section, I can click on them that way to do so. And that'll become especially useful in the parts section in a little bit. So at this point I hit close and I've now added those two line items on the invoice. So same as before, we have our item information, whether it's discounted, description, quantity, price, extended price, and of course a delete button right here to delete. Now at this point I can also add or sell an agreement just like before by hitting plus agreement here. I can also go ahead and uh, add a visit if I had a visit due by hitting the plus visit button. And lastly I can hit plus discount here and go and add a discount type or an amount if told to do so. So that's how I can go through and add items. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about too is inside the menu bar. So if I pop open the menu bar I have access to additional features now. So of course there's instructions and customer information, but now of course I can put in notes now. I can put in notes about what I did or what I recommend to the customer. This, this button, notes and parts, were both moved into this menu bar because notes and parts are not necessarily done linear inside the job. Some people do notes at different parts, some people do it in others, so that you can go through and you can add the notes whenever you need to. So notes becomes available as soon as you're on site, and parts becomes available as soon as you have built an invoice for the customer. So you guys can always go in and plug that stuff in if need to. So for me, I'm not working on my notes right here. I can click inside here uh, to add my notes. I can close the menu to make it a little easier. So I can click, keyboard pops up, and I can put in my notes about what I did. 
All right, so I got my notes in there, lower my keyboard right there on what I did. And of course, with notes, makes it a little easier. I can always flip it sideways. Got the bigger screen here. Makes a bigger keyboard when needed so that I have access to a bigger keyboard. Now to switch, I can switch over to Work Suggested by just clicking the Suggest button here, and it clicks between the two. And just like before, if I wanted to add a uh, predefined template from, uh, from the templates we created, I can hit the drop down arrow here. I can choose one of them and hit the plus button and it automatically adds that note onto there with what was inside of our templates. So that's how you can go in and add your templated notes as well as your work done and work suggested. And once I'm done, I hit close. It saves those notes and brings me back to my screen here. I can proceed with the invoice. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the forward arrow and proceed forward and it's gonna bring me to my next step, which is the work authorization if you have that turned on. So if you have authorization turned on, it brings you to an authorization screen. Just like before, all the line items on the invoice, everything about it, and I can get a signature down here at the bottom from the customer authorizing the work. I clear it now at the top so that the button is no longer there in the way of the signature. And then I can go ahead and hit proceed, and I have my authorization. After gaining authorization, it's gonna bring me through to our next step, which is payment. Uh, just like previous, I have my payment information here. So if there's a balance or a deposit, I can apply it. I have my total, my total due, and my payment amount. Now when you load in a payment, it doesn't have any choices done here, and you'll see the, the amount is zero. Well, if I were to hit check, it'll full, fill it in with a full amount here, and then allow me to plug in my check parameters, parameters right here with the number and name. I can choose credit card. Again, I can choose in, uh, to swipe it or key in the credit card information right here. I can choose other gives me my other payment methods where I can choose my drop down for my other methods here. And then lastly, if I choose none, it'll actually zero out the payment right there and show that there was no payment being collected from this customer so that you have a balance and you in the office can handle that balance appropriately. So that's how you can go through now and collect no payment from the customer. And for this job though, I'm gonna select a check just to get that information in. I'm gonna plug in a quick check number here as well as a last name and I click the forward arrow, my policy pops up and I click yes past that. And it brings me now to a approval screen. So this is where I can go through and get my approval after the work was done. I have the same uh, uh, invoice we were looking at before. I capture my approval and I hit that forward arrow. And now it brings me through to my job summary. Uh, before I go through the job summary though, I wanted to talk about that other option in the menu, which was the parts option. So if I hit menu at the top and now uh, you'll see parts is available for me and I can choose to add my parts. Uh, very similar to how it was done before, I can click right on the task. I can close the menu here to make it a little easier for me to see. I can hit add to add an item, and I can either go through the catalog or search. For me, I'm gonna search for the specific item, and there are my choices here. Uh, much bigger typeface, easier to read. I can go ahead and check on that item, and now I just simply click save and that item has been added. Brings me back to my search feature, so if I needed to add it another item, I could. I can hit close, and you'll see that that item is right there added onto the invoice. And once I'm done, I hit close once more, close out of that, and I'm back at my job summary. So now I can go through and fill out my job summary. Um, I can identify that there was maybe an agreement opportunity here or specific opportunities. The job summary acts very much the way it used to um, with all of the same options there that are correlated to the job summary inside Successware. So I selected the opportunities here. Maybe I have a replacement opportunity, even my job data information if I wanna put in a total ticket or a money task count if that's something you guys track. I can go down and put in my uh, diagnostic only or no charge or any of my call types right here, and I can proceed. Uh, before I proceed, you'll see the 10-8 button is still there in the top left or top right. I can hit yes to send 10-8 right off the dispatch so that they are getting their notifications and can proceed with setting up my schedule. So I have the 10-8 sent, and now I can step to the next screen, and it's gonna bring me to a uh, final screen here where I get ready to wrap up my call, which is our job review screen. Uh, you'll see that it pops open with the review information right here in front of me. I have a send receipt button up at the top. It's there if I need to. But also now if I hit complete assignment, you'll see a send receipt option comes right in here as well. Email and complete. So that it's a reminder so your technicians can definitely email off that invoice to make sure that that gets to the customer. 
Uh, also with this new version we give you the ability to choose a job status upon completion here. So it'll default to completed but for example if you're maybe holding for a part or you have other statuses that you allow your technicians to select they can do that and upon completing it will change the job status to show that it is holding for a part right there. So that's a great little feature for your continued jobs to make sure that they stay open and you guys get those follow-ups scheduled accordingly. Uh, but for me, I'm just going to have it completed here, so I'm going to keep it at complete, and I'm going to go ahead and email and complete my call. You'll see the email address is going to pop up right here. I, of course, can change it if I need to, but I click OK, and it sends that email off to the customer. And at that point, that's me completing the service call. Uh, just like with the previous versions, upon completion, if I had another call assigned to me, it would ask to dispatch, but since I don't, it's asking me for a status, so I can go ahead and choose my time card status and click save, and that will save that information to show that um, I am now available on here or at my status as I wait for my next call. So that's pretty much it with the new application. You'll see that there's a side menu button here that uh, allows you to kind of pop in and out to view that uh, additional information, and uh, then you have your jobs here that you can work through. Uh, again, this new version is very much a, a reskin of the application and making it a lot easier for us to add additional features in the next coming weeks and months here so that we can uh, really ramp up the software to do what it is that you and I and all of us would like it to be able to do. Uh, so that's everything here with the new application. If you have any questions, please call our support team at 800-566-6940. Again, that's 800-566-6940 or you may email them at support at swremote.com. Again, that's support at swremote.com. Thank you and have a good day.